everyone. At this video, we are going to demonstrate the paper proposed by EAL and Emin Gun Syrah. They show that the Bitcoin mining protocol is not incentive compatible. They present an attack with which colluding. Miners' revenue is larger than their fair share. Rational miners will prefer to join the attackers. First of all, we will briefly introduce the contribution of this work. Firstly, Introduction of Bitcoin What is Bitcoin? How Bitcoin Protocol Works? What is Bitcoin Mining? The pros and cons of Bitcoin rather than others, and what is incentive compatible? Secondly, Introduction of the Selfish Mind Strategy, which demonstrates that Bitcoin mining is not incentive compatible. Then, an analysis of selfish mind, and when it can benefit a pool. How are they gaining benefit from this strategy? We will emphasize on this part rather than others. After that an analysis of majority pool formation in face of selfish mining will be illustrated. Finally, a solution is proposed which is a simple backward compatible progressive modification to the Bitcoin protocol to increase the difficulty of selfish mining behavior. So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the centralized digital currency. Bitcoin you can send on internet. Compared to another alternative, Bitcoin have a lot advantages. Bitcoin can transfer one person to another via the net without going through bank, which means the fees are much lower, you can use them in every country, your account can't be frozen, and there are no arbitrary limits. And then what is Bitcoin mining? The role of miners is to secure the network and to process every Bitcoin transaction. Miners achieve this by solving a computational problem which allows them to chain together of transactions as Noah's famous blockchain. For this service, miners are rewarded with newly created Bitcoins and transaction fees. How does Bitcoin mining work? Anybody can become a Bitcoin miner by running software with specialized hardware. Mining software listens for transactions broadcast through the peer-to-peer -peer network and performs appropriate tasks to process and confirm these transactions. Bitcoin miners perform this work because they can earn transaction fees paid by users for faster transaction processing, and newly created Bitcoins issued into existence according to a fixed formula. And we should know what is Bitcoin mining pool. A mining pool is the pooling of resources by miners who share their processing power over a network, to split the reward equally, according to the amount of work they contributed to the probability of finding a block. A share is awarded to members of the mining pool who present a valid partial proof of work. Mining in pools began when the difficulty for mining increased to the point where it could take centuries for slower miners to generate a block. The solution to this problem was for miners to pool their resources so they could generate blocks more quickly and therefore receive a portion of the block reward on a consistent basis, rather than randomly once every few years. Now, we know how Bitcoin works. How do we know if miner is not cheat on the block, or they have motivation to secure whole system? So is the miner is incentive compatible? Bitcoin miners are supposed to get revenue by the ratio of their mining power, however, there is a strategy that can be used by a minority pool to obtain more revenue than the pool's fair share. Then this pool may absorb miners' mining power who want more revenue The key idea behind this strategy, called selfish mining, which can mean Bitcoin may not incentive compatible. Selfish mining is an attack on the integrity of the Bitcoin network. This is where one miner, or mining pool, does not publish and distribute a valid solution to the rest of the network. The selfish miner then continues to mine the next block and so on maintaining its lead. When the rest of the network is about to catch up with the selfish miner, he, or they, then release here portion of solved blocks into the network. The result is that their chain and proof of work is longer and more difficult so the rest of the network adopts their block solutions and they claim the block rewards. Now, we emphasize on how selfish mining works. So when the forks are generated intentionally and the longest chain wins, after that what an selfish miner is trying to generate a secret fork. So the dashed red blocks are generated by an attacker selfish miner and if they're dashed it means the attacker keeps them private only the attacker knows of these blocks.
If the line is solid then it means that the blocks is public everybody in the system can notice the block. What selfish thinking is that we're going to risk some work generate a block and we keep it private. Therefore, attackers risk that they are going to lose the block if honest miners may be able to create a longer chain than attackers. So what the attacker does is that it form the secret branch, once they're at the top head of the blockchain, they keep generating a block in secret. Even though it already exits some secret blocks which were published show a solid red solid line, it still keeps afterwards blocks secret as well, so it tries to create as long secret chain as possible. Meanwhile, the majority number of miner is honest players, and they are generating their blocks as well. Because of advantage of honest minor amount, they will eventually and reach the attacker's lead and cease them, so just before that happens, the attacker is supposed to publish two final block, which result in current longest public fork is the attacker's chain, and the honest parties lose their blocks. Now, let's look at risk. That's say the attackers already has the secret local block generated, and now the honest part is generating their own blocks, but they don't know the attacker's fork exist, only attackers know of this fork. What happens in this case is that attacker published this block and then we have a time race. There are two blocks here on by the attackers and on by the honest parties. Then three things can happen. At the left side, you can see the situation where the honest parties follow their own block, at the right side, the attacker follows its own block, however, there's also a chance that when the attacker broadcast its secret block earlier, some honest parties may receive this message before other honest fork information, so they don't know which one is honest and who is selfish, based on this, they might generate an honest block after the selfish miners chain, because the attacker publishes a secret block only after seeing the honest block but have a good network. And for the purpose of our analysis we're not going to exactly how much attacker can achieve this, so for gamma equals zero means it never happens, the honest parties only follow their own block. And for gamma equals one, attacker be able to see another message and publish it to everyone before it actually reaches the honest parties. So how the attacker's revenue can grow is that the difficulty of the main blockchain is adjusting itself, so that blocks are always generated at a set interval. It's one interval for one bitcoin's block. Which means that what matters is the ratio of your blocks within the main chain. So the revenue of the attacker is its ratio blocks in the main chain. The part of reason for how this protocol was formulated was that, it allow s fairly convenient analysis. The paper was going to do a Markov chain, and it is state of the system by the difference the lead of the attacker against the honest parties. So if the attacker is the zero there is just one head of the chain the attacker's lead. The attacker has secret blocks two secret block that the honest parties are not aware of, it could be 1 and 3 and it could be 10. We know that honest parties follow Nakamoto's protocol, let's see what's happening, so at rate of alpha, which is denoted as the attacker's mining rate out of all mining power in the system. Going to the right, the attacker increases its lead and the threat at the rate of 1 minus alpha. When process to left, honest part find blocks and lead decreases. Then if we at zero, the attackers finds a block, it can go to one lead position, if the honest party finds a block we don't go back to we got zero because the attackers publish what it has. If it has no leads, the honest head of the block tending the honest parties, and find a block we stay at zero, if we have the lead of one so the attacker has a lead of one, then the honest parties find the block, then it is the race condition, from the race condition we have these three options going back down which are a function of both alpha the attacker size and gamma the probability being able to rush. So to analyze this situation, an equation is formed. As the figures shows that threshold for an attacker is going to be one third, and above one third is going to succeed with this attack. It can be observed as a function of gamma starting from zero and going all the way to one, the threshold size for an attack being profitable at zero, we hit one third and at one of course this is the second case, so the attacker is able to perfectly rush adversary, it's always able to send its message earlier than attacker of any size is better off attacking because there is no risk. 
Why is this possible? The reason is that the Line protocol of Bitcoin is very aggressive about making sure everybody hears about everything but not necessarily fast. It's not worried about doing it rapidly, and so if an attacker is able to position itself at a lot of point within the network, the only thing it does is try to propagate its own blocks faster than the honesty block. The relative revenue of the pool for mining power unit as a function of the attacker side grows super linearly, so whenever you are you're making more than linear progress by going to the right, it means a rational player that sees who trusts the threshold making more revenue than by playing honestly, he's want to join the pool and earn more than he can, but for the pool, because of the super linear growth for the pool, it's also beneficial to have them join in, so they encourage selfish pool to grow, which result in Bitcoin mining mining are not incentive compatible. Bitcoin receives in two blocks competing a race, it is going to follow the first block it has heard about protocol decision, so solution now, might be if you know multiple chains of equal length you choose uniformly at random between them, with this it can get a threshold against the selfish mining describe at one quarter. The growth of Bitcoin is fueling speculation and debate about the environmental impact of the collective energy needed to power the virtual currency in the era of climate change. As a result, there are many burning questions now emerging about the issue. Bitcoin is the most popular virtual currency in the world, and it has grown in value over the past 12 months. It was created in 2009 as a new way of paying for things that would not be subject to central banks that are capable of devaluing currency. The sustainability concerns about Bitcoin, voiced by economists and environmentalists, stem from the process of mining that is central to its existence. The miners use computers to make complex calculations that verify transactions in Bitcoins. This uses a tremendous amount of energy via computers and server farms all over the world, which has given rise to concerns about the amount of fossil fuel-dependent electricity used to power the computers. Some estimates say Bitcoin's energy impact is more than that of a small country. The algorithm mainly mentioned in this topic is proof-of-work and selfish mining algorithm. Proof of Work is an algorithm that Bitcoin miners using solve crypto puzzles, which is a proof of work mostly using SHA-256, is a piece of data which is difficult to produce but easy for others to verify, and which satisfies certain requirements. Producing a proof of work can be a random process, with low probability, so that a lot of trial and error is required on average before a valid proof of work is generated. Bitcoin uses the hash cash proof of work system. The difficulty of this work is adjusted, so as to limit the rate at which new blocks can be generated by the network to one every 10 minutes. Thanks for spending time, time on this video presentation. See you later. See you later.